Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Research Lounge. My name is Kate Frost, and I'm the Head of Patient and Public Involvement and Engagement at Nottingham University Hospitals Research and Innovation. And tonight, I will be your host for the Research Lounge session. The Research Lounge is an opportunity for patients, the public, carers, and research staff from all walks to come together to have conversations around topics of interest. Tonight, we are exploring the theme of migraines in children, and we have been joined by our children's team and Professor William Whitehouse to discuss a study named Pioneer, which is aiming to improve the outcomes for children with migraines. Before we start, I just want to go through some of the ground rules for the research lounge sessions. Um, so we'll first hear from Professor William Whitehouse and then we will hear from our children's research team. If you have any questions at all, please do pop them in the chat, which is on the right side of your screen. Um, all questions are welcome, but please remember that we're in, in a kind and respectful space. Secondly, please do ensure that you are on mute for the duration of the presentations. This can be found in the bottom left. And also to note that this session is being recorded. So if you do not wish to appear on camera, please do turn your camera off, which is on the right hand side of the bottom pane of your screen. So that is it from me. Um, and without further ado, I'll pass you on to Professor William Whitehouse, who is going to discuss a study named Pioneer, looking into improving the outcomes for patients who have migraines. Thank you. Great. Th thanks very much, Kate. Can you hear me all right? I hear you perfectly. Thank yeah, you. Great. Thank you. So um, it's a short talk about the last Miditan uh, trials, which are the first 5-HT1 receptor agonist. Uh, <laughs> to use for acute treatment of migraine. Um, so migraine is really common in children and not everybody realizes that even uh, preschool children and primary school children because from migraine, there are some approximate percentages there. Um, you may know that it's more common in women than men, but in um, younger children, it's about equally common in boys and girls before puberty. And, um, You'll know as well that it's really incapacitating when you're in a migraine attack, whatever age, you're completely crashed out. You, you might have a milder migraine where you're still able to do some stuff, but in the severe migraine, you just want to be left alone in the dark and quiet and not move. Light and noise and moving about makes it worse. And of course, you might be feeling sick and you might vomit. And if you're a child, your parents might have to take time off work to uh, look after you. So the, the problems with the migraine is significant morbidity relates as the pain of the headache itself, which can be severe, the incapacity, I've mentioned the vomiting, I've mentioned missing school and missing activities is important for the child, but also the parents can and carers can miss time off work and their activities as well to care for the child during the attack. So what causes migraine? Well, there's a, it's a disorder of the pain pathway for the pain fibers um, around the vessels and around the lining of the brain. And the pain pathway uh, makes you experience pain when you shouldn't uh, be having pain at all. So it's there to tell you if you've got um, a bleed or a, a fractured skull or an abscess or something in your brain, something really bad like that to keep you still and quiet and protect you and tell you that you're ill. But actually in migraine, it does that signaling when it shouldn't. So it's a problem with the sensitivity of the pain pathway. And it's a very complicated system that is been increasingly understood, but isn't fully understood yet and that's a diagram of some of the components of the pain pathway and this uh, 5-HT1F receptor that this meditin uh, is an agonist for is involved in that and the 5-HT is involved in kind of damping down the pain signals as they they come into the brain um, and so uh, can act as a theoretically should be able to act as a good treatment for migraine. And this, this paper here um, from the, the USA uh, proposes that using a 5-HT1F 
agonist could be a good treatment for migraine. And that was um, quite a few years ago now, 2002. So since then, um, there's been several trials. So this is a, a trial from about 10 years ago in adults using with migraine using this lasmiditan, the 5-HT1F agonist. And this diagram shows the results. So if you look um, on this line here, you see uh, distribution function. That's like a percentage, but it's 100% is rich. That's written as 1.0 there. And along here, we've got time to meaningful pain relief. So if we look, say, between one and two hours, which is a useful endpoint, really, you can see that the people who were on the placebo uh, treatment, that's this blue line here, out of uh, 100, there would have been about 10 who got relief by two hours. Whereas the people on lasmididine, uh, on the highest dose, it was almost 50-50 got um, at two hours, got significant pain relief. And on the lower dose, it was kind of in, in between. So, so that was the first trial that showed it working. There was another study here by another group and this shows their results in a different way. But so uh, perhaps you, you could look at this one, which is headache, whoops, this one over here, headache relief. And you can see the placebo group, uh, one hour it's here. So about 25% um, relief and the active treatments, the two doses, these, the star trial, it's about 40% relief. And that increased as time went on. On here we have pain-free. And again, at two hours, you've only got about 15% pain-free on the placebo. That's the dummy treatment. And on the higher dose of lasmiditine on the 200 milligrams, you've got about 30% pain-free. So it significantly does improve the duration and severity of pain of migraine attacks in adults. This is um, a table of side effects or adverse effects that occurred with the 200 milligram dose and the smaller dose and on the placebo. And you can see that even on the placebo, there were significant numbers who had adverse effects like um, dizziness, for instance, but it was commoner in the participants who took the active treatment. So, uh, dizziness was more common, tingling or paresthesia, sleepiness were more common in the active group, active treatment group than in the placebo group, but there were no um, serious uh, adverse effects. And one of the reasons for that is that the 1F receptor agonists don't um, constrict blood vessels. So the established acute treatments called triptans, you'll be aware of, they theoretically can at least constrict uh, arteries. So restricting coronary artery could be bad if you've got coronary artery disease. And so this uh, 1F agonist avoids that risk factor completely and um, therefore offers perhaps a safer treatment, particularly in people who are prone to uh, diseases from, from constriction of their arteries, like coronary artery disease, but also maybe people with hemiplegic migraine in whom there's general concern that maybe giving a triptan could aggravate the hemiplegic migraine. So the idea is that it'll be safer than the triptans. This is another trial and we've got similar, similar results. They're all presented in a different way. But if, you, if you look at the bottom panel, headache, um, pain, relief after the first dose, here's the two hour mark. And we've got on the higher dose here, we've got 60%, 60 to 70% relief. Whereas on the placebo, on the bottom line here, it's only about 40%. Uh, so significantly better than a dummy treatment for relief of the pain, but also on this panel for relief of the most, most bothersome symptom that could be the nausea, for instance, or the um, photophobia or phonophobia, whatever the patient thought was the most bothersome of their symptoms during a migraine attack. So this pioneer uh, studies, there are, there are two um, sponsored by Eli Lilly and this is the first um, studies in children. So the aim is to, in, to recruit children aged six years to uh, 17, over 15 kilograms. The trial will start, at least in the UK, start with 
uh, older children who will weigh at least 40 kilograms and will be using the similar dose to the adults rather than uh, smaller doses that we would want for primary school children, for instance. Um, to, to be in the study, the children would have migraine without aura or migraine with aura uh, for uh, at least six months and to have between two and eight moderate or severe headaches a month in the previous two months uh, from starting before starting the trial. Typically their attacks would last three hours or more untreated um, and are not responding to current treatment. So we don't want to recruit patients who are managing really well with their migraine at the moment, but to those who are having troublesome migraine in spite of treatment. They need to swallow tablets. So this um, doesn't come as a nose spray or a melt at the moment. So the children in the trial would need to be able to swallow the tablets okay and would have to keep their other medicines stable for uh, at least three months. Uh, we don't want any uh, teenagers uh, to get pregnant during the study. Um, and we didn't want the participants to post information on how they're doing online because that could undermine the, um, the, the blinding of the study and the scientific integrity of the study. And there are a number of exclusions, including heart disease and so on, which are very rare in children. So um, I was gonna take questions there, uh, Kate, and um, we're gonna ask Laura, one of our experienced research nurses to talk a bit, talk in a bit more detail what it would be like to be in the in the trial. So I'll I'll finish there for now. So as William, Dr. Whitehouse has already told you, Pioneer is a study that we're running here at Nottingham Children's Hospital where we are looking at a new drug, lasmitidan, and how effective that is in helping children that suffer from migraines. Um, the team at Nottingham is the lovely Dr. Whitehouse that you've already met this evening, Jess and myself. Um, Dr. Whitehouse is the principal doctor running the study. Um, Jess is the lead nurse on the study and I am supportive and just help everything run. Um, so at Nottingham, we will be seeing... Um, our patients in the children's outpatients facility in South Block, where we've got a nice private little room for people to come and have their visits. Um, and that's that's our facility. So that's where you will be coming if you were to take part. Um, and the journey looks something like this. You'll come to clinic for an appointment for your migraine, or maybe you'll see a poster up in your GP or in college and school, and you'll think, oh, I've, I have migraines and my medication is not really working that well. Um, so either we will approach you at a migraine appointment, or maybe you'll see a poster and you'll give us a phone call and you'll approach us. And at that point, we will explain a little bit about the study, gauge your interest, ask you a few basic questions to see whether or not we think that this study would be the right fit for you. Um, and then we would move on to booking you in to um, our clinic in Outpatient South, where we would do a screening visit. Um, screening visit would be one short visit, uh, which would then, if you fulfill the criteria, move on to enrollment and continue through to the end there's these each of these is explained more on the following slides so if that's a very brief overview that's so approach and recruitment as i said this can will either take place in clinic or um children and young people may see our lovely posters that are going up uh in clinic down in clinic at nottingham children's they're also going up in gp practices pharmacies and some local secondary schools and colleges. Um, we were also advertising this trial on the Migraine Trust um, website. So you will find details, contact details for Dr. Whitehouse or Jess or myself on them. Um, and people are able to approach us as well as us approaching people we think might be interested in taking part in clinic. Um, so criteria for who can take part and who is eligible. These children need to be B1 
between the ages of 16 and 17. Um, that's including six and 17 year olds. They need to have had a diagnosis of migraine, either from their GP or if we're seeing them in clinic, that will have been from one of our neurologists. They need to have no history of heart problems. So not born with any heart issues, no strange heart rhythms, anything like that. No history of brain injury or disease. Some people that have headaches, um, it can be as a result of an injury to the head or following um, illnesses like encephalitis or meningitis. Unfortunately, these children, although they have migraines and suffer from migraines, won't be eligible to take part in this study. Um, they need to not currently be in any other drug trials or have taken part in any in the few months prior to us approaching and recruiting them. They need to suffer from between two and eight migraines a month. And these migraines need to be of quite a long duration. They need to last at least three hours um, for them to be eligible. So not every child that has migraines will be eligible because some will have migraines, but you know they'll have migraines maybe every day, um, but for shorter periods, in which case I'm afraid that they, they can't be in this trial. So those will be the kind of questions that we will be asking you on approach and looking at more closely when you come for your screening visit. So during the screening visit, the first thing that we will do is uh, Dr. Whitehouse or another doctor if he's not available, will take consent from child and parent. Um, you will be given information to read prior to it to make sure that you understand everything about the study, about what it is that we were going to do, how frequently you need to come in and be seen. And we will do this before we do anything else with you. OK, so before we do any blood tests or anything like that, we need to make sure that you understand exactly what you're signing up to, exactly the reasons for it. Um, and if at this point during this conversation, you decide, oh, no, this isn't for me at all, actually, I'm not, I'm not happy with this, you're completely, completely within your rights to change your mind and walk away. Um, and it wouldn't affect any of your clinical care if you did that. So once we've got your consent, we'll then see um, in a more detailed way than the few questions about how often they have headaches and um, how long the headaches last for, whether or not they're eligible. So what we will do is we will sit down, we will do an ECG, which is um, a few little pads on your chest and your arms uh, to look at your heart activity. Um, completely painless, takes 10, 15 minutes and gives us a lovely printout with your heart rate on. So we'll just check that that's okay, that there aren't any underlying heart problems that perhaps we weren't aware of before. So just to double check that there's no cardiac issues. We'll then do some blood tests. Um, blood tests can sound quite scary, but we'll, if we will give you the option of having a local anesthetic cream or a cold spray or distraction, I mean, We've got Where's Wally books in clinic and you can always just have a chat, hold mum's hand. Lots of things we can do to make that as easy and comfortable for you as we can. We will do some questionnaires. Um, we'll ask you to do a wee for us and then we'll take more detailed uh, medical history from you about your headaches, about any history of having hit your head, um, and anything else that may or may not arise from that conversation. Okay, after your screening visit, if that ECG and that blood test and those questionnaires all look really good and lovely, we bring you back for an enrollment visit. At this visit, we will randomize you. So as uh, Dr. Whitehouse explained, you will either be randomized to receive the medication or the placebo. We won't know what you get and you won't know what you get. Um, 
and the study team that we report to won't know what you get. So we will give you a pack of medication to take home and we will also give you an electronic diary, which is a device that looks, it looks like a smartphone. And we will teach you how to use that so that when you get a migraine, you will use the iPhone, the smartphone to tell you which of your tablets you should take and when. And it will also ask you questions about the level of pain that you're having so that you can put in there um, when your pain eases off and how, how bad it is, et cetera. Um, we also do something called cog state testing, which is actually quite fun. We get you on a laptop and you um, do their tests to look at your cognitive function, which sounds like a big word, but it basically means how well you can figure out problems. But they're very, very easy problems. They show you cards and you have to like click one button if the card matches, click another button if it's one you've seen before. And we'll do some more questionnaires at this visit as well. Following on from the enrollment visit, you go home with your study diary and your medication packet. And for the next 12 weeks, we will phone you once a week or so to see how you're doing, sorry. Um, and we will ask you with your e-diary, this is what the screen of it will look like when you log in, you have to do a daily check-in just to show us that you're still thinking about it. You know, when this migraine happens, you're going to be, you're going to be on it. You're going to get your little e-diary, you're going to put in the bits that you need and, um, and take your medications as it tells you to. So it's very important that you do your daily check-in just so that we know that you've got, you've got your e-diary, you're looking after it, you're keeping it charged and it's ready to go when you are. It might be 12 weeks that you have to do this for if you don't have a migraine that's suitable for the study medication in that time frame, it could be considerably less. It could be that you take it home and the next day you have a migraine that fits all the criteria that we need it to. And then that will trigger you to come back to clinic and move on to the next part of the trial, which is PEDS2. When you do have a migraine, you get your e-diary out you put in, as it says before, I have a migraine, and it will ask you a few questions about the type of headache that you're having. It will ask you how long it's lasted for. It will ask you if you've had a migraine in the previous 24 hours and taken anything for that. And if, if the e-diary decides that this is a migraine that's suitable for you to take your study medication with, it will then tell you which row of your medications to take and instruct you on what you need to do next. Once you've had a migraine that qualifies and taken your study medication, you, that's the end of LAHV or Pioneer One, which is a blinded part of our study where we have study drug or maybe placebo. So you would come back into clinic and you'd then be given the option to continue into Pioneer 2. Again, just like Pioneer 1, this is completely voluntary, completely up to you and your family. Um, and instead of being a blinded trial, you would definitely be getting the study drug in this trial. It continues for a much longer period. It's not just 12 weeks, so you'll be expected to treat um, more than one experience of migraine. And if you decided to continue on to that, these are the things that we would do at that visit. We would review your electronic diary and we'd also provide you then with a paper one going forward. Um, do another ECG, a few more blood tests, um, give you your new lot of study drug and uh, continue to see you at once a month in clinic to see how you're getting on, whether or not you know, you feel the medication is working, check your bloods, check your heart, do your questionnaires, make sure you're filling in your paper diary properly, 
very similar information to what goes into the e-diary, you know, headaches, how long they're lasting, that sort of a thing. That goes on for 12 months. And then that, that's our study. Okay, thank you ever so much for your time today, guys. Just let us know if you have any questions. A huge thank you to Professor William Whitehouse and Laura Lawless for those fantastic and informative presentations. And I do hope that everyone in attendance has enjoyed the session so far. Um, now we are going to move on to an open question and answer session. Um, if you have already put a question in the chat, then we'll be addressing these in the order that they were placed. Um, if not, then there's still opportunity to put a question in the chat. And I would like to invite everyone as there's no question that is a silly question. And that is our mantra here. Um, so without further ado, thank you very much. And we look forward to answering your questions. <laughs>